I'm going to be doing today is a little bit of a general maintenance on the, the mini pond. It has some uh, internal lights on it and some little uh, windows that all need to be cleaned every now and again. A little overflow, waterfall system needs a general clean back. Just a, just a little tidy up and we'll let you have a look at the little fry again, see what you think, see if you think he's growing again, see if he's got any more fries for him. So, let's pin camera on, show you what I'm going to be having a look at, and then we'll make a start on that. Alright, I've just switched off the pump, the air stone, and the uh, little ultraviolet. This is a little, uh, it's fully built in. If you look down there, you can see, look at the light there, it's green, and it has a little LED, it's light emitting diode that. Uh, if you don't keep it clean, it's just the side of the bulb. If you don't keep this clean, then the light stays on. So I need to just give that a clean over. Clean all the algae off the side of there. Give the little overflow, waterfall, and clean back. If I put some of these plants in, this is, uh, I think it's water mint. It smells absolutely gorgeous. But it's not doing to a cracker. Most of it seems to have died off. But these grasses grow grown like crazy, and this is doing well too. Plants are doing all right. And there's the, the little Kai down there, see if we can get a zoom in on him. Just give it a focus, if not I'll see if I can catch him again in there. I don't think he's growing. There he is. Focusing on the net as opposed to focusing on the uh, on the little fish. But right, give me a second. I'll roll this netting back, and we'll see if we can get a closer shot of him. Now, as you can see, guys, these little windows, although they are fantastic for looking at your fish room, <laughs> it only takes a matter of days, and you can't see anything. So I'm going to give those a clean. But let's see if we can get a couple of shots. All this little fry and the rest of his tank mates. Fancy goldfish. This little fella here, is, well, it was called, is called Pip, but uh, it was a friend of ours and uh, shared it for her sons. And she, he grew a little bit too big for the tank that he was in, but he always had swim uh, bladder trouble. Now I've tried everything, done the pee thing, feed him sinking, float, uh, sinking food, sometimes you know he's pretty good but he eats, it's going to be a long term problem that I think he has, I don't think there's anything we can really do to cure it but he manages, he can go dormant at the bottom of the pond through winter period and such so and everybody that says out there that you're not supposed to keep these fish outside and they're not supposed to stay in cold temperatures and they should be kept in indoors and all the rest of it. These guys have been out here for three years and not a thing wrong with them. So they have constant oxygen all the way through the winter. The water's not heated and it gets pretty damn cold and they do absolutely fine. And they, they was in a tank in my daughter's room before she moved out many years ago and they got way too big for that and I was growing all the original koi in this at first before I made the big pond so I decided that we'll make the bigger pond and we'll give you a bit more information about that as well and we'll make this into uh, my daughter's pond to grow her fish on now she's had her own little son and we've picked up a couple of little uh, sarasa goldfish there for him which we bought them a couple of weeks ago and they were a lot smaller than what they are now they seem to be growing but there's the little fella there just down there not easy to start get a, a proper view of him sorry I think we'll try see if we can get him in the net and have a look at him but I don't think he's I don't think he's growing he's certainly bigger than what he was you know, a decent shot of him there then for a second Is actually another. I don't know what the what type it is, but it is another black a black fancy goldfish. Anyway, let's give the windows clean. Give it a general uh, maintenance. 
maintenance and uh, I'll get back to you with a, a shot of him in the net afterwards. Hey right, guys, here we go. This fly is definitely grown a heck of a lot. And I'm thinking, I think he's in a saga. Little red fins, petrol fins, all that little bit of red to him, a little bit of uh, potential spot maybe coming be on his head. Looks like a little zipper. So we can get this in good shot here. Maybe a little bit of a zipper down his centre. If we can get him to He's definitely got some orange coming to his underside. Beautiful little fish. It's definitely grown. Heck of a lot. With red eyes as well. A cool looking fish, but hopefully, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Let's see if I can get a get him in a better bit of a better shot for you as well. Definitely a fingerling in size now. Yeah, he's got the orange to his underside, orange on his cheeks, a little bit of a zip on his on his back. So come on, Leon and uh, Vince. Any of you other guys out there? Let me know what you think he is. I love him. Beautiful little fish. No, let's let him go. Come on, off you go. That way, down. Right, so all the windows are clean. You can see the fish through the glass again. Perspex, whatever it is, plastic. But yeah, quite good these little ponds for anybody that wants to get a small little garden feature or water feature in. <coughs> they don't come with this netting, obviously. I had to put this on because of the neighbours' cats. So all I did was wire a little bit on the corners either side and then cut it to a general shape and wrap it and roll it up and twist it on the underside of the framework that comes on underneath there just tuck it all under that and it's enough to stop the cats from stuff from getting to it or getting to them and it's worked up to press no predators have got any of them. Never lost a single fish near. There you go, that fish there. You just see them just twizzling around a little bit. Some days it's good, some days it's bad. Depends how. But you see just popping bubbles out of its mouth then. But I know you can take them to the vets and they can do these in injections to remove the air at the air sac at the front and the air sac at the rear to help it with its buoyancy, but geez. I mean, it's a goldfish, guys. I don't know what you guys think to that kind of thing, but a heck of a lot of money to spend on a little fish. And especially when it's, it's growing to the size he is, he doesn't seem all that bothered by it. Right, I'll just frick the, uh, the air and the filter and the uh, ultraviolet back on. All this is run from inside out, from the other point. And and the cables drill through. The heck is that? I can't even see that there, but that's gone. Funky looking bug. And that's as you what that is. <laughs> it's alive anyway, whatever it is. Clean. A little bulb down there is clean. This is the only trouble with these little ponds when you have to clean the windows, obviously, because you're disturbing the algae off the window. Look at him there doing. Once he's gone to the toilet, he'll be fine again. It's weird. It's almost like when it's had something to eat and it needs to go to the bathroom, kind of thing. He gets trouble with his buoyancy once he's got that past 
and it seems to be alright again. So it kind of does this funky little spin around and but I believe it's all to do with the swim bladder. But yeah, when you clean these glasses off and these windows off, then you end up with uh, a slight green tinge to your water for a short period of time until your filters draw it through. But it all comes as a prefab kit. It's a, a Bald Blagden or Balden, however it's pronounced, half moon pond. Quite good for the, you know, something that's not got a lot of space and you want a little bit of something in. My intentions were, at one point, as you can see, this whole flagged off area. And I might do it yet one of these days. All this into a pond. And then when I come out my back door, make a bridge to go. Because nobody uses these damn steps. <laughs> Which is... Uh, bit of a problem for me and I'll say it's a bit of a problem is because everybody steps across on here or they step from here to here the dog goes from here to here and the last time we did that kind of a jump it broke his leg and cost me two and a half grand to have it put right or two grand should I say it was going to be a little bit more but the vets did us a bit of a deal and put him a, a bionic inch in his leg so <coughs> That were an expensive day, but yeah, that's what I'd like to do. But my wife won't let me do it, she'll go nuts if I did. But I'd like to turn all this into a pond area, get my filter system, would be the hard bit, maybe on that back wall there. But I'd like to turn all this and then have a bridge to step over into it, into my garden, then to the second pond. So that's what I'd like to do. Or my other idea is, at some point, because these guys are growing as much as they are, at some point to uh, redo this one. I mean, I made this, if you look, I don't know if you've noticed guys, but it's in the shape of a bee, which is for my daughter, Bethan. So when we made her a pond for her fish to go into, it's a bit more obvious. I'll try to see if I can get a shot from bedroom window and it shines up a bit more now, but with the plants there you can hardly even see it. But from back here you might be able to tell a little bit more. It's in the shape of a giant bee from my daughter Bethan. Um, we made that we made the little pond into a pond for her fish, so obviously I needed some for my fish. So I jokingly said oh, I'll make a, I'll make a huge bee in the garden and then turn it into a pond. So we, we might out with a nose pipe. Mind it all out, and that's how this begun. So, yeah, but look, the fish are, the fish are doing cracking, they're doing so well. I mean, this this guy now follows me, no matter where I go, he's, he's, he's so greedy, he's constantly around me all the time. Nice and active, love to see him just cruising around, swimming around, but they always seem to be searching for food. Now, as you guys know, I did have a lot of protein on the water. I ain't got any protein anymore. I have cut back a little bit. I mean, it's not doing them any harm. They're hungry all the time, but they seem to be growing pretty well. And I've had a couple of issues with somebody's thrown some stones in my pond there. So somebody's been a bit of an ass. Either that or it's washed out of the backy shower, which I doubt very much because the weir gap at the bottom is probably not big enough to get them kind of stones in. So. I'm thinking somebody's been messing around local, kids, maybe whatever, just throwing stones around. And I've been lucky enough for them to land in my pond. But yeah, look, I'm constantly hanging around that area now all the time where I've been feeding them. Now I'm at the bottom end of the pond. They're constantly hanging around all there, waiting for more and more food. <laughs> I'm going to uh, pop off to my local... Uh, Koi Pond dealers shortly. Um, I'm going to ask them if they mind, and if they don't mind, I'll do a little bit of filming in there and we'll get that involved in this week's video as well. So, this is where the majority of these fish came from. There are six or seven or so which I bought all as a, a deal from my local garden centre when we first bought the, the little pond just for they were on like, think, like I say, little fingerlings this size, and the majority of them are all now in there. The Yamabuka is one of them. The, orange and black one which you can see down there the 
black and white one. Guys, if you know the names, stick them in comments because I cannot pronounce half these for the life in me. And I'd, I'd, I don't want to make myself look a bit of an idiot and try pronouncing them because fish <laughs> look as if they maybe said one way, but when I hear other people saying them, they're totally different to how, I, how I, I'd actually pronounce it. So, but yeah, koi. That covers them all for me. I know a few of them, but not not the vast majority of them. I need to brush up on them. So yeah, so I'm going to pop down there to my local cord dealers. I wanted to get some more blanket answer, just in case. I haven't got any blanket algae, but I did use the last part of what I had. So I'd like to get myself another tub. I might get myself some of the uh, uh, bio friendly bacteria balls, those little tiny ones. So I can put a few in the there and put a few in the, the other filter drum there. And then I think that's going to be uh, pretty much it for now. Little ponds cleaned out, fish are doing great. Oh, what I will be doing later on if the sun comes out and we get some slightly better weather and it warms up a little bit, I'm going to get uh, a little bit of watermelon. I've got a nice big full wall of watermelon in the fridge. I'm going to take them a full slice off, drop it on the surface, and see what they think of that. But I was hoping it might warm up a little bit, so we'll see. That might be in this video too. I'll get back to you in a bit. Hi right, guys, so I've been uh, practicing or being patient with the koi and keeping this, uh, feeding them in close every time I walk past the pond now they're right up at the top of the water all coming around waiting for something to eat As you can see, you know, they don't, they're not all that bothered no more. That's spooked. It's just if I move really fast like that, then they get spooked. But they're not bothered by the hand. Yeah, that's the orange. Orange and black one. Complete orange before and now it's totally changed. <laughs> Still looks a nice fish though, it's growing really well too. As well as well are most of the others. I mean, look at that the size of that shabuck in there. It's over uh, 17 or 18 centimetres, I think, when I measured it. It's not bad for a shabuck, especially to say it were only bought at a couple of inch tiddler run really well. The lily's not opened up yet, but it is rather early to that. Let's see, one second. 7.34 Saturday morning. So, yeah, it's a little early yet. The flowers to be opening up. Talking about flowers. Um, my daughter asked me to uh, Oh, she's been asking me for a while to get her some cuttings from the plant uh, in my garden, which is this big pampas grass. Apparently, guys, it's a new rage, it's a new big thing. So all your wives are probably already doing it, if they're not going to be doing it before very long. And that's getting dry flowered arrangements in their house, or in your houses. So, what I've done is taking a few of these, cut them and allowed them to dry off and I stuck them inside the house for my daughter and then when I stuck a few inside the house for my daughter the wife decided she wants some but my daughter said I should sell them because apparently they're worth an absolute fortune I'm not so sure about doing anything like that but you know, if, you, if you've got some nice flowers and plants in your garden guys you want to get some of them dried out and make that nice uh, a little arrangement of flowers for your life so she can have them in her, in her house and she can also enjoy the flowers outside the, in the garden and enjoy them long term when they've been dried out inside your house but yeah, I don't know what other types you would put in but I mean I know the 
pampas grass is certainly one that's fetching quite a lot of money on online if you look and google it so anyway, i said i'd mention it daughter's going to be coming and picking hers up at some point today so i'll uh, let, her, let her tell you a bit more about it if she wants to do but yeah me uh the plants are going like crazy in the pond though absolutely crazy i mean these reeds the bulrushes i believe I'm stood here look. And they're, they're taller than me. I'm 5'11. They're at least six foot odd each. So there's no wonder I've not got so many uh, nitrates in the uh, pond with all those lilies and all these. These ones are a bit on the smaller side. But yeah, uh, another problem I've got. The backy shower. I was talking to uh, another guy from uh, Cold Bins from Twisted Koi. If you haven't seen his channel, go check it out, guys. I'll put a description down in the bottom. He was saying that over the hot days that we were getting the other week, that he was having problems or has been having problems with some of the welding joints. Now, this could be one of two things, and if you've got any info, guys, get your uh, your answers, or not your answers, but your help and your info in the comments below. On the underside of this little weir there, you can see that it's blowing or rolling slightly under, which in turn is then tracking across the bottom of the weir. And waiting the stonework at the side, and obviously evaporating a percentage of the water out of the pond. Not that that's a big deal, it's not really a big deal because at the end of the day, any time that water gets taken out of it, you only have to replenish it, so it's part of the partial water change. So it's not really that big of a deal, it's not taking out that much, it's not that much, but I'd rather the water was staying in than leaking. But I've taken the, the shower apart to have a look and to see if I could find any form of um, cracks or splits, as Vince was saying. He'd noticed on his that some of the wells are starting to separate. But I'm wondering if my problem is the lack of power from the pump, which is only 2,000 litres per hour. So it's not coming off the edge of the blade in as much of a flow as what it is. It's, it's, it, you know, it, it's set level left to right, but front to back, it's set leaning forward so that it's you know leaning towards the pond. So that it's got more of a chance of dripping into the pond. If I lean it back or let, put it level completely, then it tends to come a bit more underneath as well than what it is doing already. But I mean, it's not such a big deal. But if anybody's got an idea, if you think if increasing the pump rate or the flow rate would make a difference, let me know what you think. Anyway, right, I'm going to get round to. Uh, at some point, some general maintenance of the pond. So I'll get back to you in a short while. Yeah, guys, so there you go. That's what we're talking about. A little dry flower arrangement there. For my wife. And again, another one for my daughter. And apparently, this stuff is, uh, <laughs> is the new fad. All the old ladies out there are loving this kind of stuff. So, if anybody wants some, As you can see, I've got quite a bit left. I used to normally just leave it in the garden for it to all dry out. Once it's all dried out, then I uh, just let the birds take it, and they normally seem to take it early spring and make nests out of it. But what they do do is drop it all over my pond as well, so I'm not all that bothered about it being cut back and be dried off for the flowers and somebody else getting some enjoyment out of it. But it's nice to see birds using it for nesting material as well. Anyway, back to what we were doing. Alright guys, so, let's get to the Koya Carp Centre and a uh, quick pop to the garden centre as well. See if we can pick up some blue slate and some uh, mind your own business, also known as baby's tear I think, for the uh, backy shower. 
Right guys, we're here to pick up a little bit of blue slate and to see if we can find some mind your own business. If they haven't got any here, I'm hoping I might be able to get some mind your own business from uh, the uh, Coyote Carp Centre that I'm going to be going to afterwards. So I'll uh, spin the camera around, let you have a quick look. This is my local garden centre. Alright guys, so thinking about getting a few bags of this uh, blue slate just to top up around the back where the backy shower is. And they've got some big pieces as well. 4 99 or oh, buy three for 12 quid. Some big chunks. Plum slate. Black Mountain. Rustic Sage. Rustic Slate again. But this is the stuff I'm after. A couple of bags just to top up my. Uh, Plum slate, 40 mil. So I grab a trolley, bang a few of these in, in a trolley, and stick them in the van. <coughs> Let me just go grab a trolley, guys, and I'll uh, get one of these pulled over. And we'll load some in. There we go, 5 99 and 3 for 15 and I just want to top up round the, uh, by the backy shower and add a little bit extra there, cover up some of the, the pipe work and such. Right, we'll get back to you when we get back inside the And that's the blue slate loaded into the van. Let's go have a word with my members to see if we can find any mind your own business. Spin you back round again. Beautiful garden centre, it's absolutely stunning. Loads of nice little water features that they've got here. So they are lovely. That's nice. I'll see if this lady knows if you've got any uh, mind your own business. Excuse me, love. Could you by any chance know, do you have any uh, mind your own business? Um, we do sell it um, out here, quite often get it as a house plant, so I'm just checking there. Plant. Smashing. It's, you know it's very, very invasive, don't yes, you? Yes, I do, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, wanted it to, I wanted it to go inside what's called a backy shower, so it's part of the filter system from a koi pond. Oh, so I see, right. It grows really well, and it takes a lot of the nitrates out oh, of the water, so okay. it's... It's not okay. technically a water plant, but it grows really well within that kind of area. Yes, so. yeah, yeah. I would check inside, so I'm looking at the house plant section. Thank you very much. Quite often, Appreciate that. Thank you. No you. Just have a quick walk around. Have you have a quick look at Garden Centre. Some lovely flowers. Well maintained, well looked after. Try not to get any of the staff in the view, so nobody has to feel awkward. But yeah, some beautiful plants, guys. Well worth a pop around and come and have a look at. As I leave the store I'll get you an outside view of the shop entrance so you can see. But yeah, some beautiful plants. A lot of my plants and uh, decorations that I've got around the garden all came from here. <coughs> So I just thought while well, I'm going to be out and about, I'll stick myself down here and call in and pick up some uh, blue slate for around the pond. But yeah, plenty for your uh, clean gardeners to come and have a look at. Beautiful. Right, let's pop inside like she said to see if we can find some. Get right back to you. Give you a quick shot inside the store guys. My your gardening tools treatments, indoor plants. I'm going to have a quick look through these and see if we can find what I'm looking for. Be right back. There you go guys, Birchcliffe Garden Centre, it's your main entrance. It is an indoor cafe, uh, restaurant, indoor plants, 
pretty much everything you can need from your garden centre. But guess what? Apart from mind your own business, they ain't got none of that. So, right, let's go to Coyote Cart Centre and see if we can pick up some from there. We'll get back to the van and we'll make his way over there. Right, let's go. On to the next one. This is the uh, quality coy company, Brig House, what does feel? All their uh, lilies and aquatic plants. All more aquatic plants there, and I think, looking like this, just looks like we might have actually found what we're looking for, so mind your own business. It looks very similar to it, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to have to Google the name and see if that's the stuff. If not, looks pretty nice. Nice and margin pond. Might give that a go and see what that does. Check you in guys and let you have a look. All the little goldfish tanks. I believe that we're going to pick up your pond there. All the treatments, pond pumps, nets, and believe it or not, those plants that I've got growing in my garden pond are all growing out one of those kidney shaped baskets there. I'm guessing now at the size that they've grown that they've probably burst out of those baskets. More food there. Let's take you up and have a look at the coin. Some of the larger stock. Well, we're staging down there as well. Good sized fish, it's about three foot long. Couple of big checks over there in the background. And the prices. Now we have their uh, little grow ones.
feel my fish come out of these uh, out of this particular tank. The last two new additions came out of this group. Get rid of that light for you there so you can see him. A bunch of shabubkins. Larger goldfish. High quality Japanese curry. Found we found a piece. And got a little bit of damage to its tail. And the big ones. Absolutely beautiful. I give you a bit of a scale size. That's my hand. It's a big fish. All oh, very big fish. Hi right guys, I'm going to uh, switch camera off, pick up what I want, make my purchase and then uh, get back to home and get everything put in place. UV bulbs, filter floss, pumps, power flows, pretty much everything. Pretty much all what you need. Pipe fittings, gate valves, elbows, joints, solvents that went, uh, solvent, cement, bottom drains, you name it. Pretty much got everything. Big nets. <laughs> Man, that valve's almost as big as my pond. Right. I get my stuff picked up guys and I get back to you in a tick. Alright guys, well we've got what we needed so we'll get ourselves back home and we'll get these a uh, couple of new plants in the uh, one in the little pond to replace one that seems to have died off and the other one, I'm going to see if I can get it to grow out of backy shower. Picked up some uh, blanket answer because we run out of that but we don't have any problems so and I also got some uh, Pure pond balls for the uh, filter system. So I'll catch you back when I get back there to uh, back home, and I'll see you again soon. There you go, guys. All these opening up. My three bags here. I'm just going to top up this area this way. It's a bit, a bit thin. You can see it's a bit thin in a few places. Top up around here, and then back from all that bit in there. Just going back. So I'm going to get these in, I'm not going to be able to record this bit because it's going to be difficult as it is going over there with a bag of 20 kg uh, of blue slate. So I'll spin camera around, 
sorry, pick camera back up once I've got it done, I might have a look at it. And there we go guys, all topped back up, we filled it all, went a lot further than what I expected. So, I've gone all the way around here, covered up, topped up all this bit, and all around the back corner. Fill it all back in. Turned all over all the, all the forest back in the dog's bathroom area. There we go. Well, as you can see, guys, I'm bouncing it down. So I'm hiding in my shed at the moment. I don't know why we're going to be putting any uh, treats out for the fish today. I bet they'd still come up for it, like, but. A bit more refreshing for him on a nice sunny day. So, right. The next one is to try to get the new plants in the little pond. And then the plants in the back of shower. Let's see what we do with that one. And get back to you again. There we go again. New plant in. This one's growing right really well. So are these. So new plant in. Oh no. There's a load of bed there. There we go. Get that little fella out. Stick it on there, save it drowned in the pond, or being eaten. There we go, that's the little pond sorted out. All clear again now. Now the filter's running. And you can actually increase the power of the water uh, fire by turning down the water movement on this one. There we go, a bit better. Right, a bit of lunch and then I'm going to see if we can get this one in, strip all this off, clean it all out, stick it in the back of the shower. See how it does. I don't know, but we'll see. We'll have a try. Right guys, so I've done the, uh, the new plant for the back of the shower. All I really did was just tease the plant out of the pot, rinsed off the uh, roots till I got all the, all the soil out and all the little bits of stone, bits of muck and mess, and then uh, pretty much, well, I'll show you. I'll just spin the camera around, let you have a look. Yeah, so all I did, guys, was uh, took the pot, teased the plant out of the pot, rinsed off all, removed the majority of the bulk of the soil, and these are the little bits that's just dropped off loose little stems which don't have any root system to it so um, rinsed all the roots off got them all completely clean washed all the soil away got rid of all that lot and then basically just left it with the actual uh, leaves itself and the root system i then lifted up the, the backy shower and popped some poo on the top one in the bottom obviously as you can see as you can see there they're, they're getting moisture running through them because they're dripping so it's getting plenty of uh, moisture to them and we'll see how it goes. Now for all those that are interested this is called the Bog Pimpernel or Anagelis Kenella. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right but I gave it a go. <laughs> um, I believe it's a 9cm plant requires putting in a mesh basket and placing on a shelf in a damp ground Trim foliage to tidy as if required. Um, should get a little flower on it between June, July, August, and September. So it forms a dense carpet of tiny leaves mixed with numerous rosy pink flowers, ideal for bog gardens or very shallow water. 
well it is very shallow in there and it is almost I want to say bog type but you know it's going to be getting a cascade of water continuously I'm not so sure if it's going to do what it is but for now it looks nice and we'll I guess we'll find out together so like I said there you go guys that's the plan fingers crossed we'll find out together how it does so I think I'll just grab a little bit of food give these one final feed for today and then I'm going to enjoy editing all this video together so I'll uh, grab a bit of food and I'll get right back to you right then, let's give them a little bit of food see if we can get them to come up nice and close again Love to see him feed like that. There we go, guys. <laughs> Spook that one then. So guys, that's it this week. Um, I'd just like to say a special thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, I know the numbers are small, but for me it's an improvement and it's growing. The channel's getting bigger. 43 subscribers, I think I got a 40, 44th subscriber today. Um, it's starting to pick up and that just makes me happy and I'll carry on doing what I'm doing. I'd just like to, like I say, thank you to all the people that watch and continue to come back and watch. And thank you to all the new people that have just subscribed. And like I say, if you wouldn't mind, if you enjoyed what you've seen, give us a thumbs up or uh, like, share and subscribe. Appreciate it guys, and I'll catch you all on the next one. See you around soon.